In today's Warframe guide, I'm gonna give you the best shotguns in the entire game that will allow you to absolutely dominate Steel Path like it's a piece of cake. We're gonna go over how they work, where you get them from, which mods to use with them, and most importantly, I'm also gonna give you a cheaper budget build alternative for each and every one of them. So, after a huge shout out to all my generous channel members who helped me keep the lights on, let's jump right into it. Jumping in with not only one of the best, but maybe even the very best shotgun in the game at the moment, which would be no other than the Strun Prime in Karnon. See, in its normal form, the Strun is a very traditional shotgun. Shoots a lot of pellets, single shot, and also when you reload it, it's a shell by shell reload, so you might or might not like this. However, turn it into the Incarnon form and this thing goes absolutely nuts, shooting a sort of explosive plasma projectile that has a good range and deals not only tons of damage, but also that damage is mostly slashed with a ridiculously high status chance. So I think you can all imagine what this will end up looking like and I'm not lying when I say this thing is so insane that it actually killed my frame rate because there was just too much going on on the screen at any given moment. Now, since it's an Incarnon weapon, of course there are also Incarnon evolutions and we're gonna talk about this here in a second, just one quick observation that I made with Incarnon shotguns in general is that if you want to use a shotguns in Incarnon mode, you definitely want to take this against strong enemies and not against low level ones. Because for whatever reason, if enemies die quickly, then most of the pallets that the shotgun fires will not really register and therefore not contribute to your Incarnon meter charging up. So not only this run, but in general Incarnon shotguns really want to be taken into Steel Path. But now, let's take a look at the evolutions here. As a second evolution, of course, if you have a Warframe that constantly has a channel ability on, you can definitely go for the punch through here, but because I wasn't, I went for the one with the multi-shot, which is also very nice and consistent. For evolution 3, if you have a build that constantly applies electricity, then of course you can go for the one that reloads your shells right from the reserve. The projectile flight speed is not all too great, so I personally just went for universal reload speed having that consistency, and that's my personal favorite here. And in the last slot, I went for more status chance because my build focuses on dealing a lot of slashes with the Incarnon explosive projectile, but depending on which build you're aiming to run, you can of course pick freely whatever you see fit here. But now that we're already talking about evolving Incarnon weapons, there is one thing to mention here for the Strun Prime Incarnon. If you don't have the Prime version of the Strun and it's currently not available in the game, then you're absolutely fine to also take the Strun Wraith and incarnate on that, because even though at base the Strun Prime has the far superior stats, with the evolutions the Wraith version gets much bigger boosts, therefore they're pretty much on par when it comes to their incarnate form. When it comes to the build, I went all out into status chance and even added additional prime point blank to give us more base damage because that makes the slashes bigger, and also I added sweeping serration just to make sure that the slash part is even more predominant in the damage mix so we're getting more slashes out of all these explosions. This right here would be the budget build alternative, which I think also works pretty nicely, and as you see in the background, this thing absolutely shreds and I personally would recommend using this slash build against highly armored Grenier or Murmur, just anything that dies with slashes easily. And if you now think that sounds all nice and dandy and you want to get your greedy little fingers on your own Strum Prime Incarnon, then you get the Incarnon adapter for this one from the Daviri circuit. Once you have that, go to Cavalero on the Zerman 10 Zero and evolve your Strun of choice with that adapter. Up next on the list, we have an absolute fan favorite since it was released, and that is no other than the Cedo. The Cedo is a really interesting weapon, because at first glance it's just a fully automatic shotgun with a very tight spread, you know, so you don't need to get that much up close and personal to your enemy, but the real kicker with this one is the alternative fire mode, which shoots out a glaive that balances between enemies and deals all types of random status effects to them, basically lighting up the whole room like a Christmas tree. Especially if you personally are not that much of a fan of this playstyle of first switching to your secondary weapon to prime the enemy with a status, then going back to your primary and dealing the actual damage, then the Cedar would be the perfect shotgun for you because it brings the best out of both worlds to the table for you. You can stay this prime with that glaive alternative fire mode and then just finish off the enemies with your normal fire. 
For the build, we have nothing special here. We go for a crit status hybrid approach because the normal fire is pretty crit heavy, whereas the alternative fire mode is more status based. This right here would be the more budget friendly approach. And if you don't want to get a Cito for yourself, then head over to the Necrolisk on Deimos, talk to Father, and from him you can get the main blueprint once you reach rank 4 with the Entrati and the component blueprints, but those only at rank 5. And yes, I got this one as part of being in the creator program, and I'm not actually even rank 4 with the Entrati myself. It's a bit embarrassing, please don't hate me for that. One thing that's definitely not embarrassing though is the next weapon on our list and that is one of my personal favorites, the Phantasma or Phantasma Prime. We're gonna get into the normal versus the Prime version here in a bit, but first of all let's look at what the gun can actually do. The Phantasma at base is not really a shotgun, because what it actually does is it shoots out a consistent laser beam, more like a rifle, and this one has a crazy high fire rate plus status chance. It also has an alternative fire mode where it shoots like a big blob plasma projectile, but honestly I never use that myself, and I think the same goes for most of you. Now, the super duper great thing about the Phantasma Prime is the combination of its insanely high fire rate and status chance at the same time. With this one, you're dealing dozens of status effects of your element of choice per second on the enemy that you're targeting. And especially when we're looking at higher level steel path enemies where the whole damage over time meta in Warframe really comes to kick in, then such an approach is of course a godsend. In the background footage right here, I modded my Phantasma Prime for Toxin to go against Corpus, you know, because Toxin bypasses their shields and also deals damage over time. As you see, they're just melting away, and the same is of course also possible against Grenier, where in this case I would mod the Phantasma for Heat, because you know, Heat is also a pretty good DOT effect against Grenier. So, long story short, this one is an absolute beast pretty much against any enemy faction that you can encounter. This right here would be the more budget friendly approach for the build, which is also going to be super duper fine. But before we go on to the next one, I want to give you a little tip that is specifically nice to know with the Phantasma family. While yes, technically the Phantasma Prime should be the better weapon, the only thing that it really improved in comparison to the normal Phantasma is having a little bit higher crit characteristics, which is not important because we're not building for it anyway. So unlike most other weapons, here it really doesn't matter whether you go for the Prime or the normal version, they're pretty much equally strong. And just on the side, should you have a Riven for a Phantasma, then I would actively encourage you to go for the normal version, because the normal version has a higher Riven disposition than the Prime, therefore the Riven will be more potent, making the normal version of the Phantasma actually better than its Prime. When it comes to getting the weapon for yourself, these right here would be the relics that you can get the prime parts for the Phantasma from, but if you want to go for the normal one, simply head over to the market, buy the blueprint and craft it in the foundry from a couple of resources. And as always, I would also be super happy if you could drop a like because it helps big time with the YouTube algorithm, so cheers so much for your support. But now, let's go on to the next one. And that would be, of course, the Bubonico, because there's no best shotgun list in Warframe without mentioning this beast right here. The Bubonico is an infested arm cannon type shotgun which fires fully automatic, albeit a little bit on the slower side. The first thing that meets the eye here is of course the fact that you don't have a magazine reserve, so this one recharges automatically, meaning you have theoretically infinite ammo. When it comes to the normal fire, the damage is a little bit on the lower side for a shotgun, but therefore it deals mostly slash, which is really nice for high level content. However, the real kicker here is the alternative fire mode with which it goes kind of sorta of in the same direction as the Cedo, where it can be used as its own primer without having to switch to your secondary weapon. See, the alternative fire mode shoots out a 3 round burst of explosive viral projectiles. These have an insane explosion range of 7 meters with a crazy high status chance. In other words, if you use this one in the field and you encounter a group of enemies, then the first thing you want to do is burst one of these explosive viral bursts into the group and then take out whatever remains with your normal fire dealing slash damage. Having this super duper meta and potent viral slash combination united in just one single weapon is an absolute godsend, which is why the Bubonico goes on every top shotgun list in Warframe. The only little downside I can see here is that, due to the fact that it is an arm cannon, depending on how you set your field of view, it can kind of obstruct your camera, so you might not see everything all the time and that can be a bit uncomfortable. But if that doesn't bother you and you want to get the Bubonico for yourself, then all you need to do is head over to your clan's dojo, go into the bio lab and there you'll find the blueprint for it, you can craft it in your foundry and you're ready to go. Oh yeah, almost forgot, this right here is the build that I'm using in the footage that you see in the background and this right here would be the more beginner friendly 
friendly or mid-game friendly budget approach. Next, the Felarx, one of the original OG Inconon weapons, the first batch that was added to the game, and one of the few Inconons that you don't have to wait for the circuit rotation to get your hands on it. The Felarx is a really powerful, high damage, slow firing traditional shotgun in its normal form at least. However, turn it into its Incarnon form and you all of a sudden have dual shotgun pistols which also deal crazy high damage which is really nice when you're dealing with crowds of smaller enemies. However, the great thing about the Felarx is, and this is a bit of a niche role in this game but still important, is that the Felarx is the absolute nemesis of big tanky enemy types like Archons or like Kuva Liches and Sisters of Pavos for example. See, those type of boss enemies have a mechanic that's called damage attenuation, which basically means if you hit them multiple times over, they start taking less and less damage and if you stop hitting them, that sort of resets after a couple of seconds. Since the Felarx deals such high damage with just one shot, this kind of bypasses the damage attenuation and makes it very easy to, for example, one-shot Archons. This is one of the prime use cases for the Felarx, for example. For the Felarx's evolutions, in evolution slot 2, I went for more projectile speed because I don't think the recoil really bothers me and also the spread is pretty tight anyway, so that seemed to be the logical step for me. Evolution 3 is pretty much up to personal preference, choose whatever you see fit for your playstyle. In evolution 4 though, it's not even a question, you gotta go for the one that gives you more status chance but therefore less crit, because in evolution 5, this one has the same broken offer as the Fenmore that gives you a 50% chance of dealing plus 2000 percent damage if you don't crit. Therefore, you want to make sure that your crit chance is as low as possible. By the way, if you have a Riven, make sure you get one with negative crit chance for this one. This right here is the build that I'm using in the background with the Felarx, and this one is the more budget-friendly version of it. Now, if you're struggling with Kuva Liches, if you're struggling with Archons, then I personally would recommend definitely at least taking a look at the Felarx. However, should you already have the Kuva Heck as a shotgun, this fills pretty much the same role as the Felarx, also a really great boss killer. So when you have that, you might not necessarily also need to have the Felarx. If you want to get the Felarx for yourself though, then you gotta head over to the Zermanton Zero, talk to Cavalero, and there you can get the blueprint for it once you reach rank 3 with the Holdfast. Up next, we have another one of the most used shotguns in the game and an absolute fan favorite, which would be the Tenet Archaplasmor. See, before we even had Tenet weapons in the game, even the normal Archaplasmor was already an absolute beast. So naturally, the improved version now has to go onto today's list. If you've never heard of this weapon, here is what it does. The Tenet Archaplasmor shoots out a really big, wide plasma projectile into the room that also bounces off surfaces. This projectile deals massive radiation damage and depending on which elemental progenitor you chose with your Sister of Pavos that you got it from, you get another element in addition. In my case, I chose Toxin because it's one of the most versatile elements in the game. Now, this shotgun is crazy because the projectile is not only really big so that it can hit multiple enemies at a time, but also it has a ton of body punch through which means you can basically shoot it down a corridor and everybody in that corridor is gonna be dead afterwards. In the background footage here, I personally chose to use it against Corpus to showcase it, which is also why I build for a lot of toxin damage, because as I said previously, toxin bypasses shields, therefore it's the best element against Corpus. When we look at the build here, nothing really special, I went for a lot of damage and also crit characteristics to deal even more damage, but since this weapon is a bit more on the slower firing side of things, I personally would recommend at least using one fire rate mod. This right here would be the more budget-friendly approach of set build, but in case you don't want to go up against Corpus with this one and you want to use it against armored enemies, like for example Grenier, I would recommend a different build approach, going for crit and hunter munitions instead, dealing slashes. And when it comes to this hunter munitions build, there is one important thing to keep in mind. Since the Archaplasma only shoots one big projectile and hunter munition only gives you a 30% chance to get a slash per hit, you want to try to run Arcane Avenger with your Warframe to at least make sure that your crit chance reaches 100% because otherwise you're just not going to deal enough slashes to mow down the enemies as quick as possible. But if you now want to have a Tenet Archaplasma for yourself, then you need to generate yourself a Sister of Pavos, hope that she has one of these bad boys here, and once you've beaten her, you're golden. As I said previously, my personal recommendation for the progenitor element here would be Toxin because it allows you to go for pure Toxin against Corpus, but also it allows you to go pure Corrosive against Grenier if you want to do flat damage, or Viral plus Hunter Munition is also possible with Toxin. 
Alright, so the next weapon on our list is a really special one, because it's one of my personal favorite weapons in the game, it's already available at a relatively low mastery rank, and I think 90% of the community is still sleeping on this incredibly powerful bad boy right here. You might have already guessed it, what I'm talking about is of course the Corpus Convectrix. In case you've already seen my video on the best rifles in the game that I released a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about the Tenet Flux rifle being a really great beam slash weapon, right? I think some of you will remember that. Now, the Convectrix is pretty much exactly the same thing, just as the shotgun version. It also shoots a beam, or two beams to be precise, those also have a high status chance dealing mostly slash damage, and therefore this one is an absolutely deadly weapon against any enemy with a ton of armor. Now, the reason why I think a lot of people sleep in the Convectrix is because of its weird mechanic that when you pull the trigger, those two beams that it shoots need one or two seconds to reunite in the middle and construct this one main beam that you actually want to use, and therefore it's kind of a bit inconvenient to use. And I totally get that. But just look at this right here. These are Steel Path level 180 heavy gunners, and all you gotta do is just tap them with the beam for a split second, and they disintegrate in front of you completely. Because of the insanely high fire rate, the insanely high status chance, and the fact that it basically deals pure slash damage, this weapon is absolutely incredible. There's even a fix for this inconvenience with the two beams in the form of the mod Efficient Beams, which basically makes it that the gun only consumes ammo if you're actually shooting at an enemy. So you can just hold down the trigger, have the beam in the middle of your screen constantly, and it's just a much nicer way of playing this. Looking into the build, I went for a hybrid approach with a bit of crit and a lot of status chance, and also what you gotta do is go for even more fire rate, meaning you're dealing more slashes per second, which makes this weapon even more deadly. This right here, as with any other shotgun on today's list, is the more budget-friendly approach of this build, still really strong and especially attractive for maybe lower MR players among you. And if you now want to get the Convectrix for yourself, all you gotta do is go to your clan's dojo, into the Corpus Lab, and there you will find the research for its blueprint. Next, another Incarnon weapon, this time in the form of the Boar Prime Incarnon. This one looks pretty much the same as the Strun, but it is not semi, but fully automatic, putting a lot of lead down range and having a full magazine reload, so you're not reloading every shell individually like with the Strun. Now, the first thing that you'll definitely notice here, as in comparison to other weapons, is this one has a really big spread. So when you want that all your shells hit the target, you need to get really up close and cozy with your enemy. However, this whole thing being an Incarnon weapon, of course there is also an Incarnon mode, and that means basically the normal fire is just used to charge the Incarnon mode, and that is also definitely recommended because the Incarnon version of this one switches the board to a sort of heat beam rifle type of weapon, where you shoot out a ray of pure heat damage with a very high critical chance critical multiplier and also a decent status chance and the cool thing about this is you don't even need to aim the darn thing once the beam has connected to an enemy you can just look away into a different direction and the beam will still continue firing towards that foe now since it is of course an incarnate weapon let's now take a look at the incarnate evolutions that i chose in the first slot, I went for the one that gives you additional punch through if the armor of your Warframe is 450 or higher, because I feel nowadays most Warframes get to 450 at least. In Evolution 3, you might actually want to go for more precision, because as I said, the spread on this one is pretty wide, so that might be useful, but I personally went for the one that gives us more ammo. And finally, in the last one, it's really up to personal preference whether you want to go for more status or for more crit. Since in the background, I'm using this one against Infested, I went full crit. Also modding the whole thing for gas damage because this one just gets damage bonus against most types of Infested that we're encountering in that mission. This right here would be the budget build for the same situation, but of course, if you go against other enemy types, maybe they're even more armored and everything, the build would definitely vary drastically. Sounds nice? Well, then go and get one for yourself, because the acquisition on this one is not as painful as for many other Incarnon weapons, because while you can surely get it from the Steel Path circuit and then, you know, turn it into an Incarnon with the Incarnon adapter thing yet Cavalero as any other one, the Incarnon adapter for the boar can also be purchased for Platinum directly from Cavalero's Incarnon market, so if you don't want to wait for the rotation in the circuit, you can just take a bit of money and get it directly. Up next, we have another very traditional style pump-action shotgun in the form of the Corinth Prime. 
When it comes to the normal fire of it, there is not really much to explain. It's a normal shotgun, the closer you get to the enemy, the less enemy will be left over afterwards. However, it does also feature a secondary fire mode, which is sort of a under-barrel grenade launcher that shoots at one of these rifle grenades and they really feel fun and satisfying to use. However, the damage of it is not really quite there, especially against higher level enemies. And also it's a bit of finicky to use because this under-barrel grenade has to be detonated mid-air by manually pressing the alt-fire button again. And all in all, it's just a bit hard to aim that thing. However, that being said though, the main way of using the Corinth Prime anyway would be the normal fire because as you also see in the stats right here, it deals a lot of damage, it has crazy high crit characteristics, which means when we're building the weapon, we very much lean into that, go for a hunter munition slash build, and as you can also see in the background right here, one shot is usually more than enough to down an enemy because those slashes are that strong. In my build right here, I used a ribbon because I just had this really nice ribbon laying around, but of course you don't need a ribbon to make this weapon good. And also, even if you go for the more budget-friendly build approach on this one, it is still very strong and I can highly recommend it for Steel Path. Not only deals a lot of damage, but it's also very satisfying to play, fun to use, just a great feeling weapon in general. And if you agree with that and you want to get a Corinth Prime for yourself, then being a Prime weapon, of course you can only get it from Relics or if you trade with other players. These right here would be the relics that you're looking out for. And last, but definitely not least, we have a bit of a weird one, which is very strong, but also has a kind of a bit of an interesting quirk to it. I'm talking about the Kuva Comb. At base, the Kuva Comb is a fully automatic shotgun where the fire rate ramps up the longer you hold the trigger. Also, the first couple of shots don't shoot multiple pellets, only as the fire rate ramps up, you will also start firing more pellets per shot. And as if that's not enough, the Kuva Comb also has an inconsistent ammo consumption, because the more pellets you fire per shot, aka the longer you hold the trigger, the more ammo you consume per shot that you fire. All in all, I want to already say, this thing eats up ammo, so you gotta make sure when using it, that you have some way of dealing with your whole ammo economy. But before we go into the details, let's first take a look at the weapon stats for a second. The Kuva Comb has decent crit characteristics, definitely enough to justify going for a hybrid build for crit and status, but the main selling point of it is of course the radically high status chance with the highest damage portion being slash. Now, here comes the quirk that I was talking about. This being a Kuva weapon means no matter what you do, it will come with an additional element. And since this is basically a slash weapon, you actually don't want any other elements interfering with your slash, right? You want to make sure that slash is the biggest damage portion. So when you're going for the Kuva Comb, make sure that whichever one you generate has a relatively low progenitor percentage damage and never ever ever go for Valence Transfusion to actually increase the progenitor damage. But alright. Since we can't avoid having that additional damage type anyway, we can also use it to our advantage. In my case, I went for Toxin and I did something that I would usually never recommend to do, and that is putting Viral plus Slash on the weapon at the same time. The way I build is, I went for Sweeping Serration to make sure that Slash is still the biggest portion of the damage, and then for Frigid Blast, but only level 0, to make sure our Toxin gets turned into Viral, but at the same time the Toxin portion of the damage, with Frigid Blast being only level 0, will still be lower than the Slash. This way, we're gonna deal more Slashes than Viral Effects, but still enough Viral Effects to weaken the enemy. I'm not sure if this is the most efficient way to build the Kuva Comb, but it was definitely a fun experiment, and especially if you personally like to go for Viral Slash on other weapons anyway, then this one right here is probably one of the best weapons in the game to do so. Right here we also have the more budget-friendly build approach, and when you want to have the Kuva Comb for yourself, since it's a Kuva weapon, you gotta have a Kuva Lich with the Comb and then hunt that Lich down. And just by the way, if you now also want to know all about the best rifles as well, then don't miss out on this video right here. Another big shout out to Niels V, Demon Emperor, Emperor Prime, Blind Waffle, Nostal Next Gaming, Lycan Shepard, Turtle Peer, Shadow Soul, JPT Cookman, Pepperwolf, and all other generous channel members for your continuous support. We see each other, hopefully in the next one, and until then, as always, good loot and a beautiful weekend.